All right, welcome everybody to another episode of the Are We Where Yet podcast. I'm your host, Johnny, and are we where is the question. We are here at Kofa, Kofa High School, and uh, we got something special going on, and there's a, a I don't know, a celebrity chef or sh- uh, chef to the celebrities? <laughs> yeah, something is, like that, I guess you could one, say. One of those will work, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. And uh, Brandon Crosby. That is correct. Yeah, okay. how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. How are you doing? Man, I'm hanging in there. I'm t- uh, you know, just hanging out with these kids today, playing a little bit in the kitchen and Teaching them some, you know, uh, techniques and some basic cooking techniques. And okay, I, I know you, you. You're in a rush. I got you for like 15, 20 minutes yeah. or something like that. And because uh, you're cooking, you're yeah. at, right now. I just took you away from the kitchen. That's right. 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 Yeah. And th- your job to come sit down with me, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. But uh, what are you cooking for? So we're cooking for the uh, the harvest dinner for the ag uh, um, uh, benefit uh, tonight. Um, uh, me and two other chefs that they've brought in from uh, San Diego and Chicago, and we're all three preparing a past hors d'oeuvre. Um, a, a what now? A past hors d'oeuvre. Uh, uh, so tell me what that is. So it's like an appetizer, basically, that uh, that uh, we'll have wait staff that passes them out to people. Oh, okay. All right. Past hors d'oeuvre. So pass, okay, the, yeah. the, the pass, like you're right. passing a football, but right, it's right. Like food. That's correct. You're yes. not going to throw it like Brady. Well, it depends. If somebody makes me mad, we might. I like this guy's style already. <laughs> I like this. Okay, all right. And uh, so you're doing that. You're here, and you have kids helping you cook right here that are going to the Kofa High School in this beautiful kitchen that I was amazed when I came in. I went to school here. Like I said, there was nothing like this. Were you surprised when you got here? Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a really big thing and, uh, to be able to do this for these kids, get them prepared to maybe go out and get their hands dirty for a living. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a it's a state of the art kitchen in there, and it's uh, it's something it's something to see for sure. So so uh, let's talk a little bit about you. I got you here. Um, so the name of your company, I, I had a, I was reading it online, so I, I wanted to say Chupper. Yeah. But, and I, so I would have guessed right. That's right. Yeah. Chupper Chupper time, and that's a catering service. In Huntsville, Alabama? That's correct. Oh, I'm getting all these right, Rigo. This is good. This hey, is like a record. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, and uh, the number one in all of Alabama. That's it. That's a state. That's not a city. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you get number one? Staying hungry, you know. Um, you know, I've I kind of come up through the ranks back when um, chefs were allowed to throw stuff at you and, <laughs> and degrade you. And so like the TV show. <laughs> Yeah, like like yeah. The, what's that guy? I don't uh, watch t- the uh, TV. Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. So that's for reals. That's that. Well, these days probably not as not, much. Not so much with yeah. HR and that's like right. yeah, they'll yeah. sue you and but that's uh, it. Yeah, there, there was a time when that was the case. Yeah, you got stuff thrown at you. Oh yeah. What absolutely. was the hard, hardest thing you ever had thrown at you? Well, I had hot water thrown on me. Now th- that's not hard. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I deserved it, though. Oh, okay. Well, maybe then a better did, man. Maybe oh, a better chef, no. you know? I, did it really? I think so, yeah. Okay, so yeah. you can kind of really light it a flame, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so that's where you came up is that, in that time, and so you learned how to make the most delicious food? Well, I think uh, over a 25-year period of me cooking and kind of grinding it out in this business, struggling, mm-hmm. barely being able to pay my bills, and then I got a break, and I started um, cooking for uh, music festivals and yeah. traveling around and cooking for Bonnaroo. Yeah, Bonnaroo. And, I saw uh, that. But uh, we went all over the place, and so we'd cook uh, 12, 1,400 people three times a day, and then we'd also cook uh, private dinners for the for the artists, some of the the bigger artists. But we cook for all the artists. So it's the the amount that you had to put in. It's like I think that was in uh, one of uh, what's his name. Malcolm Gladwell's book, um, I think it's Outliers, where he talks about the, the Beatles became so good because they used to play in a little strip club. Right. And that's the amount of hours they put into their craft right. that made them who they are because nobody knew them when they were playing at this little strip club, but they took whatever gig they could. And then now they're the number one rock and roll band, you know, in a lot of people's opinions. So that's you. You're cooking for these celebrities on the road. And so you put so much time in your craft and then... Yeah, yeah. I mean, just hours and hours and hours of grinding it out, doing the same thing over and over and again in just wretched conditions. Um, you kind of get grimy and a little rough around the edges, you know, and uh, 
And did you, you ever get in any altercations? Now you're getting me with, with um, the, the bands. Like they came in hungry. They're like, just wait a second. I, I always just try to keep my mouth shut and do what I needed to do when okay. it came to the entertainment. Because uh, when you have an altercation with them, with 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 that the could talent, your career. I wouldn't be working. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. But uh, you know that doesn't mean I agreed with everything they said or act the way they acted, um, so to speak. But uh, just over the years, you know, and then uh, you get kind of hungry with um you, you get this drive for me personally and I just started pushing myself um to be a better chef it wasn't something that I fell into and that God just gave me these talents mm-hmm. that I was just a spectacular chef right off the bat because I wasn't something you earned with blood sweat and tears that's it that's it and and uh, you know I kept trying to leave this business and it kept kind of pulling me back in and so I took that as a sign from from the big man upstairs to just um grip my teeth, put my head down, and just grind it out. So, Like, there was a sense of purpose. This, this is what you were supposed to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So so how does that go into the food you make? with Because, like, well, I, I know, like, purpose is a sure. big deal in people's lives. Sure. And, well, uh, what, what kept uh, making me gravitate back to cooking was the response I would get from the, the look on their face when somebody would eat my food or the joy that I would see that it would bring to somebody. And that was like the best drug that anybody could ever have. I wanted more of it. And for me to, to obtain that, I had to keep coming up and working hard and coming up with different dishes and, and you know, just stuff that tasted good. I cook like I want to eat. I cook just good food that I think that would taste good. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I shoot from the hip. I'm a shoot from the hip chef. I read that about you. Yeah. Like no recipes then. I don't follow recipes. Yeah. I don't follow directions very I, well. I, either do <laughs> I. That, yeah, that, that's pretty much how I went through this whole high school here at Kofa. Yeah. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't follow yeah. directions at all, but I made it through somehow. Thank God. But um, so, th- th- so that's your style, shoot from the hip. Yeah. Because you know inside of you what's going to taste good. Like you just have that right now. That's right. And so um, could you cook something on the fly? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You said that without hesitation. Yeah. Total confidence. Absolutely. You. you know, you you go through, working through different scenarios in this business, just like in any business, you get presented with different situations, different hurdles that you got to go over. And you make these dishes time and time again by different chefs who are cre- creating something mm-hmm. a little different by the same dish. And you learn these things and you remember them. And so you you incorporate that into your own style. Gotcha. It and becomes a part of you. That's right. So what, what, give me a, like a condition or something that was pretty difficult for you at one point and that, but you pulled through. Um, there, there was a point in my life where I was homeless and uh, didn't have uh, a vehicle, didn't have money, um, didn't have a place to live, uh, but I kept working. Okay. Uh, uh, I have- At uh, a restaurant? Yes. Okay. Um, I had friends that would take me and let me take a shower and stuff like that, you know, uh-huh. for service. But um, that is something that I keep uh, and hold near and dear to my heart, and I don't ever forget it. That's what keeps me hungry today to fight uh, every day to, to present the best food um, that I can put on a plate for these people. And we, we charge top dollar for that reason. But I keep that close to me because that's only a stone's throw away for any of us at any, any given time. Any time. If you forget that and you start um, taking what uh, has been given to me um, for granted is when you start slipping and start uh, getting stagnant in, in your profession. And then that's how you can fall quickly. So I try to never be satisfied with anything that I do. Because it was probably like a little bit of a painful experience Absolutely. being homeless, right? Sure, yeah. You know, I have similar situation on this side. I made a bad, lot of bad decisions, ended up, same thing, homeless. I had slept on my parents' couch, thank God for my parents. And uh, I just had this voice in my head that said, you don't want to, like, medicate yourself through this. You, you, you want to remember what this pain is right. so you never come back here. That's it. You know, you, you got to go through this, like, like, stone cold, sober, just get through it. But remember the pain. So that you remember that pain, and yeah. so you remembering that goes into your dishes. Sure. So, Absolutely. okay, so I know presentation is a part of food. Mm-hmm. How much? Well, because uh, I heard you like you, you eat with your eyes first or something like that. There's a the saying. The majority of people that you put a plate of food down, they're going to they're going to they're going to look with their eyes. They're going to taste it with their, taste eyes, with their first. eyes first. OK, yeah. Um, and if it doesn't look presentable, um, 
you're gonna lose you're gonna lose them a little bit right there. So if it looks delicious, and then and it's kind of a double edged sword too, Johnny. If it looks good and tastes like crap, you're not yeah. doing it. <laughs> so it's you gotta you gotta make it look good, and it doesn't have to be beautiful like art, mm-hmm. just but just needs, looks just good. Just gotta be slopped on a plate, you know. Yeah, so but it's it take, take some time, put some prep into it. That's right. Okay, but I guess I guess what it is is in Alabama, in my in my neck of the woods in North Alabama, there's a lot of really lazy old chefs there that make me look a lot better maybe than I really am, <laughs> okay. and so I take advantage of that, and oh, I still gotcha. that, and I don't you know I don't get comfortable with that because mm-hmm. we've got my wife and I who is also a very big motivator for me uh, pushes me to to continue to to be better, you know. Okay, so um, you're on this journey now. You have a chupper time. That's right. That's the catering. So you you were telling me a little bit about what you do because you don't have a restaurant. So what do you do instead? So we do um, um, uh, we do large events anywhere from um, uh, weddings. We did we actually did Ric Flair's daughter's wedding uh, last fall, uh, which was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I used to travel with the WWE as well, so I used to see Rick. Not like we were best friends or anything, but Uh but uh, but his his daughter lives in Huntsville. but uh, we have to do that. We do. We've done a lot of high-profile weddings, and um, we do private chef events where I go to people's houses and I'll cook food at their house for them, three, four, five, six courses. Um, and uh, you know, we just we're not just a run-of-the-mill catering company. We don't dump stuff out of a can or out of a bag mm-hmm. and uh, and send it on its way. We try to I try to hand cut and hit hand prep, hand cook everything. Every piece of food that goes out is is touched by my hands. So you do how big is your team? Well, I'm I do all the cooking, the prepping, I do I do all my dishes, I deliver all the food. Okay. Um, I, I, so my team really is I have maybe a prep guy that comes in a couple of times a week if I need him to. So my team is maybe two people. That's incredible. Um, my wife has serving staff that it's on okay, call. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, like um, team. Okay, it could serving be staff. Anywhere from five to 30, 30 people that we can hire to just run the food and clean the tables and. Okay, stuff but like when it that. comes to the food, you, you're, you're constantly I'm, in the mix. It's I'm the you. man. Yes, you're, I'm you're, the I'm the one that that does all the cooking, all the prepping, all the shopping of the food. Uh, inventory. How, how do you do that on, on such a large scale to make sure everything looks like you said appetizing? That has that. Where's the that quality control? Well, uh, you know that goes back to working on the road and traveling and touring. You know, you work nineteen, twenty hour days, uh, and you wake up in a new city and you get off the tour bus and you do it again and you get in again and again, and um, and that kind of got me to where I I was just didn't really need anybody else to do. I can spend five hours showing somebody how to do one task, or I can spend one hour doing that task and three more. Gotcha. And so you're saying you developed a process. Yeah. You developed a process to be able to handle these situations, to be able to take all these things in your own hands, literally, to be able to provide for these uh, on-the-fly events sometimes. That's right. Cool. That's 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 incredible, man. So that's congratulations on having the number one Thank restaurant in, in the state. That's, yeah. I didn't even know that they took it that far. Well, that you could I, go. <laughs> like, I didn't either. Yeah, no. get it, get it to a, to a state. That's that's pretty incredible, man. And um, so uh, so the dinner's tonight. That's it. Yeah. And so you've got kids in there. Got some slave labor. Just kidding. These kids that want, <laughs> yeah. some of them probably want to become chefs, right? Right. Maybe <laughs> in, in the future. And it's a beautiful kitchen. We're in the like uh, the dining area, which is totally cool. I, I walked in here. This is pretty amazing. And uh, looks like they're doing good by these kids. They are. They're listening, and they're, uh, you know, the the earlier you can learn basic stuff like, uh, you know, that, that we're trying to teach them in here today, the better they're going to be, better people, better citizens, um, and and better employees. Yeah, that, that's one of the girls that I'm going to talk to next. That's what she was saying. Like, she wasn't specifically going to go into the, uh, the field, but this is actually showing her, like, social skills and how to interact with people and how to develop these things that need to be developed in our young adults for the real world and that she's getting that experience right here. That's it. That's it. And, you know, um, it's all about working as a team because if one person falls in a kitchen, uh, the whole restaurant, the whole kitchen crumbles. So learning those, that teamwork and, um, and humility is a big one. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that's one thing that I thought I was too good to wash dishes when I was 16. Gotcha. Um, but that's something that, that you learn that I had to learn the slow way. But if these kids can learn that early, that, 
you do whatever needs to be done when it needs to be done so you can all finish together as a team and you take that out into the real world and do whatever you want to do in life the, the, those are just that's just the foundation that that, mm-hmm. they're, that they're building um, and, and you learned that that was probably came to you like hard fought though because like you said you didn't want to do the dishes kicking that, and screaming son. kicking and screaming you know there's a good book by a, a gentleman named simon sinek called leaders eat last yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it talks about that. It's like, you know, to see, you know, the main guy, if he's doing, if the main chef is doing the dishes, it's like that teaches something to, to the younger generation. And that's sometimes you've got to lead from the back. That's it. And I, and I show that with our staff that, that I'm running the trash and I'm doing the dishes because, uh, you know, I'm only as good as, as, as my next person, you know, and I'm no better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, I just uh, have been, at, do, been doing it a little bit longer, but that's that's a that's a perfect example for sure that's know? awesome so um i don't want to keep you too much longer uh, what's your favorite dish to cook uh i'd say anything cajun uh you know like etouffee gumbos uh, jambalaya stuff like that um it's kind of in my wheelhouse but you know i'm getting into the thais thai stuff now thai and, um, oh, okay. And uh, fa or fo, yeah, uh, you know. Fo, yeah. um, I just interviewed a Buddhist monk from Thailand. The last interview that was right on, and he was talking about Thai food. It just made me hungry. Now you're making me hungry, so yeah. this is great. It, the 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 I depth of, of of their broths that take days and days to build, um, it just fascinates me. Is that something you're going to offer in the catering? That's what we're doing now. Thai already? Yeah, we do Thai, German. Uh, Italian, I roll fresh pot. Yeah, I mean that's that's what's that's why we're the leaders. Is oh, because so we don't we don't so just robust. Do, oh, all right, yeah, I, did, yeah. I wasn't familiar with that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, so, what is the thing that people like most that you you make? Uh, soups. I think soups? soups. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a little. I'm a soup Nazi. Uh, Got, gotcha. I, I make uh, I make soups uh, year round, but in the winter time, I, I get my soup hustle on. Mm-hmm. I love it. Gotcha. So one one more thing. For somebody looking to make it in your industry, what, what advice do you have for them? Uh, stay humble. Um, uh, yes, chef. Uh, and, and, and be the one that washes those dishes. Don't wait for somebody to ask you to do something. Just do it. Just wash uh, them. Keep your head down, and uh, it'll come. Pay your dues. Pay your dues, and it'll come. I promise. Pay your dues. Okay, I lied. One, one more question after that. Where do you want to end up? Because that's what this show is all about. Are we where yet? This show I, uh, mostly is like a philosophical show. So this is the first time I'm doing this. So where would you like to end up? Where, where's uh, the place that you're trying to get? My wife and I's dream is to uh, own a six or eight room um, bed and breakfast out in, on the lake out in uh, Lake Gunnersville in North Alabama where we live and be more of a self-sustaining farm to table oh. type place where uh, we raise the cattle and we raise the chickens and the pigs and farm the vegetables and uh, and then we put it on the plates for these folks and they come they spend a lot of money to stay with us to eat good we're gonna have like a booze cruise you know a boat and a captain and that's what we want to kind of if i could find somebody to step into my shoes for our catering to keep that going so we could move out and do something different that's what we want to do i want to be there you, so you, you, you can come out anytime you make that happen started. let me check with my producer rigo thumbs up rigo yeah yeah, he likes it. This sounds like a good idea. Well, thank you very much, man. Thank I'll you, let you sir. get back to cooking. I, I know you've got a deadline. And I think uh, I think I got Sarah coming up next. So okay. if you could tap her, and that would be great. I you appreciate it. it. You Thanks, can just Chuck. leave the headphones right there, man. And uh, everyone that was, uh, oh, here she comes. This is this is quick. I like this. I didn't have to even, like, tell any jokes or anything. My jokes are horrible, Sarah. You wouldn't want to hear any of my jokes. Let me hear one. No, not, no. <laughs> She's demanding. I want to hear one. I'm scared. One. You got to get really close to the okay. mic, like super close. Okay, are we good here? No, like no? even closer. Yeah. Okay, like that? Yeah, and then this way a little bit? Like this? There you go. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, you're here cooking with them, correct? Yes. Okay, so how's that been so far? Has he thrown any hot water on you? Um, no, I mean the first the first part when I saw him, I thought he was kind of intimidating um and he kind of like threw us right into it. Just got us started really quick. Um, but then when he had me getting started on one task, he was really like helpful and he was able to tell me exactly how to do it. So it wasn't very complicated with him. Um, he explains things thoroughly, so it's pretty easy. What's some of the tasks? Um, we were making, um, well, what we're making tonight, it includes beets. So we had to um, cut the beets um, and we had to peel them. Like right now they're peeling them in there. Um, Get a little bit closer. Sorry. Sorry. I'll just push that a little um, bit. 
And then before that, we had to, what my task was to put them inside of a, like a, a bus bucket. Um, and I had to like put the oil and the pepper and the salt with them and kind of toss them in there. And so he was able to show me how to do that properly so that they all get um, an even portion of Sh- show like, the Show you the proper sauce. way. Yeah, like you said, the, the evenly. And I saw there was like a different color beet in there. I've never seen that before. What's that? Did he tell you what that was? Um, I mean, it's just the yellow beets. Um, I don't, I I've never seen by, them before I know beets by but... Dre and then, you know, <laughs> that, that's about it. But uh, there's a ye- yellow beet in there that they're cooking. So the, does that act like a different flavor? Uh, know? Yes, it is. Um, so what we're doing in there is we're trying to, um, he had a, his own recipe that he wanted to do tonight. And none of us have even um, tried it or really heard of it. Um, So it's pretty interesting to see how that's going to turn out at the end um, because none of us have had it before. So being able to cook something that none of us have worked with before um, and having him show us how to do it, um, it's pretty fun. Um, But he's he's a really good chef. He's able to teach us things. And there's some things that he was showing us in there that none of us knew before. And it's it's pretty cool, too. Can you give me an idea? Like, what's something that you didn't know? Um, uh, The way he... he, um, I don't remember her name, but we were peeling the beets right now, and the way she showed me how to do it was, because um, I guess they do it that way, um, he was, the way, it's, I don't know how to do explain well, how, it. How to hold it? How to um, yeah, how to hold it and how to kind of, like, work with it. Um, you got to be able to use your hands properly to work with it. Um, and then he was showing someone else from our class how to, um, I don't know exactly what it was, but he was cutting some of the food with it a certain way. He showed us two different ways how to do it with a knife and with a spoon, whether you feel comfortable with a knife or not. Gotcha. Showing you some techniques. Yeah. It's, I mean, he does it, he shows you a way to do it for yourself, um, whether you feel comfortable one way or another. So he gives you options to do it. Gotcha. And um, I talked to you a little bit yesterday. You said you weren't going to specifically go into this field. No. What field were you going into? I plan on going to the medical field. Medical field. Okay. So this is part of the whole, like they call it the CTE program. Uh correct and uh but some of these skills here that you're learning in the kitchen with the chef are stuff that you could take with you yeah like professionalism or work ethic um things like that you have to have that everywhere you go so being able to work in a kitchen you have to learn how to work with a team and of course you're going to need that in the medical field um it's just there's so many things that you can learn from being in a cte program or a culinary program that you can take anywhere with you yeah, and definitely, like you said, work as a team in the medical field. You know, mm-hmm. here you might burn some food or poison somebody. Like where you're going, you, somebody could die. Yeah, exactly. And so being able to work with other people is such a key factor. I mean, if you can't work with people, you can't really do anything. Yeah, so that's some of the things that you're learning here. Part of this program is how to learn together and uh, to develop some of these life skills that you're going to need out there in what what they call the real world, right? It's yeah. like you're going you're gonna to go out. How old are you? I'm 18. You're 18 years old. You're going to go into the, the medical profession. I think you're going to do great. You, you sound great on the mic already. <laughs> Thank <That's>, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty surprised. This is great. Um, so uh, this is an opportunity you're probably going to remember for a long time, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this guy. Uh, are you going to go to the dinner tonight? Um, actually, I'm not going to be able to. I wish I could, but I'm not able to attend tonight. Uh, so, But I'm hoping to see some pictures and find out how it went for everybody. Are you going to get to taste the food at least? Um, I hope so. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> I mean, needs it to should get be you. done today, so I hope so before I leave that I get to at least try it. Or just stick it around. Me and Rigo are not going to leave until we taste anything. <laughs> we're going to no, stay here the whole sure time. Try it. Yeah, this, this is great. Well, um, uh Let's see if I have any other questions. Like I said, this is on the fly. Um, so, medical field, uh-huh. doctor? Um, I was thinking nursing or physical therapy. I'm torn okay. between both. I really like both. So, I why physical therapy? Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I took sports medicine here at COFA. Um, I, I got into it because my sister was into it. And once I took the class my freshman year, um, I just fell in love with it. I've always loved working with athletes and um, just being able to create treatments for specific athletes because not everyone can use the same treatment plan. I mean, everyone, their own body, um, everyone is built in a different way. So everybody needs a specific plan to help Mm -hmm. them recover. Um, And then my sophomore year, I got a job working with the athletic trainer here. um, And I worked with her up until uh, November last year. Um, And I was just in love with it the whole time. I mean, I couldn't picture doing anything else you know I, I really enjoy the medical field that's awesome you sound like you're going to be very successful <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you yeah <laughs> like I, I wish I could uh, f- follow your career from this point on because <laughs> it, seriously it sounds like you're very confident you got what it takes you you you, you were willing to do this interview on the fly you yeah. know 
they pulled you aside. They're like, yeah, sure, I could talk. Of course. What are you talking about? <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I'll let you get back to the kitchen. I think I'm going to either get Mr. C or Miss Honeycutt. Or Miss Nicholson, yes. Or, or Miss Nicholson. Yeah, that's what I'm doing next. <laughs> uh, all right. Where's she at? She's over there. Let me okay, go cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, like I said, we're here live at uh, COFA, where I went to high school, graduated in 1998. So that'll tell you how old I am. But um, all right, she's here already. Cool. So you're going to have to get close to the mic, too. It's like, okay. the, 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 no, that's far. Oh. Near. Okay. Th I'm practically ahead. kissing it. You're doing great. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> I know it seems a little odd. But, it's you know, I, I got these microphones specifically so we don't get along. You guys, like, got hip-hop music going on the next door and stuff like that. The kids are getting into it. They're having a good yes. time. So um, these mics are built that way. So anyway, so tell us what you do here. Uh, so I'm the culinary arts teacher here at Kofa High School. Okay. So w was this your brainchild, or how would this all come to be? How do you get a celebrity chef? Actually, so every single year we do an event with GoAg on campus, and uh -huh. my kids just help them serve. And so the lady said she was super impressed with my kids, and they had an event coming up. They needed a Does facility. the lady have a name? Susan from okay. GoAg. Oh, okay. So uh, Susan Sternitsky? Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Yeah, shout out to Limelight. They put all this together. So. Correct. And, gotcha. and they do the GoAg event on campus, and my kids serve for that every year. Okay. And so they... Wanted, they're like, well, we have chefs coming in. We need another facility. Your kids always work great with us. Can we, are you interested in doing it? So absolutely. And so that's how we got here. So she said, your kids always work great. So that's a reflection of you and the way that you, ha seriously, because okay. that, that's a reflection <laughs> of you and how you handle it. That must have been an honor to be able to be asked that question. Well, and, and I always love when people have good things to say about my kids. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, now you got this opportunity. How are your kids enjoying it? They love it. And and the truth is, I know that this event is for ag and we do culinary, but anytime you can bring somebody in from industry and have them work hands-on with my students, they absolutely love it. It reinforces everything I say. It gives them a glimpse of what it looks like in industry. And so it's a great event for them to get to realize that and do that. Okay, so um, what's a little bit of your background? Um well, as far as culinary, <laughs> we don't want to get into the, uh, <laughs> you know, police records and no, no, like no, that. there's none of those. Okay, so, cool. Um, but many, many moons ago, my husband and I used to own an Italian restaurant and um, we actually closed that around 2008, 2009. It was actually 2009, which we all know was a, a rough year mm -hmm. in uh, the U.S. for that time. Um, I, I, then I got picked up by a corporate restaurant to go be their staffing and training manager, which was the Olive Garden. So I worked, they actually moved, they're the ones that moved me to Yuma. So I'm originally from Nevada. And oh, so they okay. moved me here and I worked there for about eight years. And then, um, my life changed and I have small kids and I didn't want to work every night and weekend and holiday and, and I wanted to be home with my kids. And so somebody else turned me on to what about teaching it? And I never even thought of that as an option. And now I've been doing it. This is my third year, and I absolutely love it. The third year. So who, this somebody, was somebody that was familiar with the program that COFA has going on or, like, these schools here? Or Yeah. She actually teaches here as well. She was a good friend of mine before I actually started teaching here. And she... Um, she actually used to be a firefighter, and now she teaches fire science. And so um, she was like, you know, this is an option. You can actually take what you've learned in industry and then be able to teach it. And so she kind of helped me with the process and the paperwork and what other classes I needed to fill to get that certificate. And you, you said something to me yesterday, and I just wanted to highlight it because it really resonated with me. You said that you left that industry because you wanted to spend more time with your kids, be home yeah, absolutely. With, with, with the family. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, that takes some courage sometimes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And a huge pay cut as well. Yeah. But it, I love, and, and you know, that's why I started it. I started it because I wanted to be home. I wanted those nights off, those weekends off, those holidays off, the, to that time with my children, the, with my family. But I continue to do it because I love it and it's fun. And now I, I do it for a lot of the reasons I do it is for the students and what they get from it. And even if they don't go into this industry, they still learn a life skill from it. Exactly. And, and I love that part about it because it doesn't matter it, if you want to go in the restaurant industry or not or, or you know, be a chef or not. Or, or you can, you have to feed yourself. So they learn that skill, and I love that part of it. They learn food safety. They learn sanitation. There's a lot of those uh, employability skills they, they learn as well in teamwork and communication. 
that it doesn't matter if you want to go in the field or not. You, they're still learning a lot of stuff that they can take with them forever. So you made a decision that this is, I, I want to spend more time with my family. Now you came over here, you're teaching, and you're getting rewarded by it, like seeing these kids um, learning, like you said, these life skills, something they're going to be able to use when they get out there in the real world. And so it became a blessing for you. In yeah, a way. absolutely. So, you know, sometimes people are willing to make sacrifices for their families and they may not love it, but they, they do it because it's, you know, better for their family or it's better for this. But to be able to make the sacrifice for my family and love what I do, I mean... That, that's like a dream come true, right? right? You get, Absolutely. I, I walked in yesterday. Mr. C was giving me a, a tour of everything, and I saw kids smiling, and they're, but they're at school, you know, and they were talking <laughs> and they were laughing and stuff, and I'm like, wait a minute. This wasn't happening when me and Rigo were in school, you know, and uh, it, it, I was kind of blown away. Yeah. And, and you were in the classroom. Well, and you know, it, it, the truth is I, I actually have an advantage. So, you know, I don't, I don't teach math. I don't. So they get to do things and they get to create things and have fun with things. And, and yes, it's a learning opportunity and it's not always perfect. And sometimes they burn it and sometimes they destroy, literally destroy it. But I, I mean, when you're telling somebody, okay, part of what we're doing today is we're making this or we're, we're and you get, when you're done, you get to eat it. Everybody's going to want to do it, you know. So mm -hmm. science has labs; they call them labs, and we we call it labs as well. But that's when we're in my kitchen cooking something. And so, when you want to dissect this frog, or you want to make chicken piccata, you know what I mean? And, and uh -huh. they're going to be like, "I don't know what that is, but I'm going to make chicken piccata." Okay. What, what's the? You brought that up. What's the most fun thing that the kids got to cook, or like uh, most exciting? Well, for them, the thing that they always seem to talk about long after we make it is with my second year students we do a whole canning unit and and everything from you know jams to pickling to um quickling which is just like quick pickling um and we we do things like torshi so we're fermenting things all the way to or kimchi is another thing we ferment mm -hmm. to pickling beets which most of them have never even eaten a beet and now we're pickling things uh, we make all kinds of jams and then i let them discover their own recipe and make uh, an item themselves, that seems to be something that so they So they seem always, to enjoy that. Yes, that seems to be the unit that they constantly that's, talk about. Oh. I, w I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, I know. It shocks me too. It's just, it, yeah, that's a little bit of shock. So like these kids are going to go home and they're going to have like a pantry with like things that they pickled and like different <laughs> yes. jams and stuff like that. And like, you know, I know yes. my grandmother did that, but uh, okay, that's uh, that's cool. So what's yes. a, something that you like to cook? What's your favorite? Um, you know, the truth is, I go through phases, you know, there's some things I, I'm like, I discovered something new and then I'm like really like when I started doing cheeses, I loved cheese, making cheeses for a long time. And then, you know, then you do find something else that you like and you make that. And then, you know, it's just, it, so you it's, said make cheese. Yes. Yes. We, and we, we only do a couple of them with the class. Okay. Uh, we usually will do like mozzarella. Um, we'll do a ricotta, stuff like that. Easy cheeses that we can get done in a day. So it, it, is cheese easy? Some. Some, okay. The two I just mentioned Oh, are those easy. are the easiest? So yes. I, I could go home and try to figure that out if I, yes. like, YouTube it? Oh, absolutely. You could YouTube it and find it. The And you can get those done in a day. They aren't aged at all. So, so you, you don't yeah. got to age it? No. Oh, that, that, what, can I save money if I do that? No. No, okay. Well, then I'm not going to do it. Rigo, scratch that off the list, please. We're not, we're not going to do that. And then, no. Uh, okay, so, um, so you, cheeses, that's a phase. What's okay. another? Um, uh, we went through a bread phase. We did um, homemade pastas. That You're was a You're very phase. specific with, like, these phases. It's not even, like, a group of food, like, Chinese or Asian. You're talking about, oh, like... Uh, oh, I went definitely went through an Asian phase. Oh, okay. I, and I love that. And the kids love that, too. They'll get to make sushi. They make spring rolls. They make um, all kinds of stuff. So that's definitely another unit that the kids absolutely love. But I, I usually go through those phases personally and then I'm like oh yeah this is easy we could do this and so, then I incorporate it into my so classroom your personal phase comes into the classroom oh, and yeah. you're like hey we're, this is what I feel like eating today or something like this is what I, the kick I've been on and you yes. got the kids, students sushi how hard was that for the kids um we actually um because uh we only have so much time we usually stick with things like California rolls so we're not yeah. I don't have to worry about them handling raw fish and stuff like that so it's gotcha. it, it, it's pretty easy I, I break it down I get it to a point where I can do it pretty well and then so then when I show them how to do it, it's 
foolproof. Mm. I have a few friends that are sushi chefs, so they, they but they get pretty elaborate and they make the whole yeah, yeah not me. lighting things on fire and stuff <laughs> like that. It's it's pretty cool. So so cool. So you enjoy your job. Absolutely. Kofa is a different place that that I've ever been to. This is this pretty unique. Well, it um, is the best. I mean, I I think so. So this is so cool. Like I just want to I want to mm-hmm. I love your energy and I could see it in these kids. Like I said, when I walked in, it was like electric. I almost had like a spiritual moment. Like kids having fun at school. Like no, this shouldn't be happening, but it is, and you're part of it. And um, this is a great thing. So, like, again, shout out to Susan at Limelight that helped put this together. But you, Go Ag is another thing that she does. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's part of um, – I think this all ties in with that. And okay. so I, I, I think part of what Limelight is doing is just putting a – shining a light on the agricultural – industry in our in our community and so that they they bring that into the schools because they want kids to be interested in that and they want them to go to school for that so that the easiest way i think to have in in an industry any industry if you can raise them up in that town then you're not bringing all these people in they they're born and raised here and learn here and want to be here and want to be here yes i mean we have a very unique community and although i love it and i'm not from here there's a lot of people you fell in love with it i did and there's a lot of people who come here that are like no way yeah so i love it though yeah i was born and raised here um i grew up in the music world the hip-hop community and had a lot of friends that moved phoenix la trying to make it i was like you know i'm gonna do it here i'm just i'm not gonna leave I, i love this place you know and it, why travel somewhere else? And that was my thing. And then it's cool to hear somebody that coming from outside of Yuma that comes in and falls in love with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, work is what brought me here. And I don't even work with them anymore. And, and yeah. I'm, I stayed and, and we love stayed, it. And you stayed and you loved it. Well, thank you very much for yeah. what you're doing. Um, hopefully Susan comes back next year with Gordon Ramsay or something. She comes in here and cooks <laughs> and gets the kids really riled up. Yeah. That would be a fun time. It huh? would be a fun time. So Susan, go, go, go ahead and try to make that happen. Mm-hmm. But uh, thank you very much. Yes. It was great meeting you. It was great to meet and, you. Just, say your name one more time. Christy Nicholson. Christy Nicholson. Okay. Yes. So now I will definitely remember it. So thank you very much. <laughs> yep. And you go back in there and yell at those kids. Okay. I will. Thanks. All right. So who do we got? All right. Mr. C's coming up. And uh, thank you guys again for listening. This is the first time we've ever done the on location. So forgive the noise in the background. If you hear any noise, there's a busy kitchen going on. So what are they doing in there, Mr. C? I don't know. You they're, don't know? They're prepping for the meal tonight for the uh, Southwest Ag Summit. 800 uh, meals we understand they're serving. We've got the guest chef down so here. 800 with meals. Is what I understand. That, that's, that's a lot of hungry people. Yes. Yeah. So you oversee the CTE, which is the Career Technical Education, right? I'm, I'm yes. I'm For the, COFA. I'm the COFA CTE instructional leader. Okay, but you specialize in the automotive. No, I was, right now I'm over everybody, but I taught auto for 30-some years. Well, that was your, like, yeah, that auto was That was me, your, I was the auto guy. That you were the auto guy inside yes. of it, so you're no longer doing auto? Correct. We've got a new auto guy, Okay. and he's doing a nice job, and I'm trying to support all the teachers to support the kids. So th- is that your, uh, your main function, is to walk through the classes and make sure everything's going as planned? I, I wouldn't say the main function is certainly one of them. Uh, trying to support, we've got multiple career and technical student organizations, uh, HOSA, SkillsUSA, FBLA, Ed Rising, and each of them has obligations and leadership conferences and skills conferences and competitions and training. So we support getting our students to those events. Okay, so um, th- th- you want to see like the, the rising star coming up out of these individual, whether it's the nursing or the kitchen, and then go to these events and compete? Compete, but not just the competitions, the leadership also. Uh, in, in the old days, we were, uh, CT was a lot focused on the competitions, but the truth is we want to get the students the leadership component also because all of our employers and advisory committee members and the workforce that we work with, they want students to be uh, have soft skills when they go in. Okay, so then th- that, that's, I guess, your main focus is to get the kids ready for that. So you develop their leadership skills so they're ready for when they go into the workforce. They're like a no-brainer. Of course, I want you a part of my team. Absolutely. That, that they know that the student's going to be responsible, knows how to interact with others, can do teamwork, uh, meet and target deadlines, all the things employers want today. 
Yes, and you, know, you gave me a tour yesterday, and we went to the, um, so what do you call that department, the medical side? I, I forget. Well, the CTSO, the student organization, is HOSA, uh, but we have, uh, and I, we saw so many yesterday, I kind of forget, but we have a certified nursing assistant program on site. Uh, we have uh, a nursing program that supports that. We have a sports medicine program, and we have an allied health program. So when we walked into the building, there was like people with uh, stethoscopes, and uh, a young lady immediately came and greeted me. As soon as you gave the tour, she came out, and she, was she one of the leaders? She's one of our courtesy corps, and at, at COFA and in the district, we've implemented a three-level um, group of, of training students. First-year level uh, would be courtesy corps, and those students are, are trained to greet guests when they come in, to introduce themselves, to introduce the instructor, who we don't want to disrupt in the, in the training, and tell a little bit about what they're doing that day, what the goal is, maybe a little bit about the student and what the task or standard is. Well, she did excellent. I was so impressed. She, Thank you. She, you know, she took over for you. She gave me this little tour. You, you were able to go do your thing, and I'm just like, this is unreal. And she, would, she, like, she genuinely had a smile on her face and looked like she was happy to be here at school. Yes, isn't this that is, a great thing? We're, we're at school. I have to remind you guys, you know. And she, but she did such a great job. So, again, a reflection of you. Well, thank you. Because she, she did a great job, and she took me on a tour. She told me what she wanted to do in the medical profession. She showed me that they were, told me what they were learning about that day, you know, and they're talking about, like, I think one of the things I remember, to wash your hands and say uh, the ha happy birthday twice or something, make sure you get all the germies off of your hands. And uh, so it was just cool to be able to interact with her, and she's learning those life skills. Yes, and, and also of interest is she's already planning for next year. She knows she wants to take this the second year level of that class, so she's got her schedule planned out. She knows what she wants to do and how she's going to get there. And I had no idea what I wanted to do when I was here. And so this is beautiful to see, like, the people that have, you give them something to aim for. Yes, we, we're focused on college and career, whatever that might be, whatever's appropriate for the student. And I, and I, I forget the number, but they, they were talking about, like, that was the thing, to get these kids ready for college. And these kids want to go to college after this. Yes. And, and go into these different fields. We, we tell the students that, that no matter what, they're going to need additional training past high school, but make sure that it's focused on what they want to be, that if they want to go into medical, let's make sure we're targeting the right medical. And, and in addition to that, let's make certain that there's jobs out there for them when, once they're in there. If, you, if you're applying for a job, if you're interested in something, but there's no job out there, we call that a hobby. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to get the students interested in a career. Yes, and th like I said, that's a, that's a great thing you guys are doing. The kids, we're, we're having fun. They're learning. You took me to another classroom where my buddy Adrian Matthews is at, and the, the only this is this high school the only one that's going to have a recording studio or has one right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> we're proud of that. Incredible. Yeah, I went over and I got to see uh, the. It's still in the works, but the vocal booth was in there. The very nice and uh, still in the works. But he's going to have a recording studio here. Yes, it's a startup program for us this year. We are the only one in the district. It's music and audio production. Uh, we just moved into the classroom literally uh, two weeks ago. We have a, uh, like you said, we have the recording studio uh, space. We don't have the equipment for that yet. We're working on making sure we get the right equipment that's industry standard at this time. And again, that's going to be a two-year program where a guy comes in, a student comes in, uh, takes the first-year level, says, hey, boy, this is really for me. I want to do more. And then we'll go to the advanced class where, where more opportunities exist for them. You know, and, and music has always been a big part of my life. Um, that's how I got started in all of this. I was actually walking these halls rapping, and I see kids with headphones now. Like, I used to have to hide my headphones under my hoodie, and I was just constantly listening to music and then rapping and trying to um, show anybody that, hey, look at I rap, you know. But now you have, a, like, a legit outlet for these kids if that's where they want to be a singer or a rapper, make music, record the music, do whatever. They have a literal outlet right here. Isn't that a nice thing? It's, it's incredible, man. Like, really, I was getting chills walking into these different rooms that you were showing me because it's like they care about the kids here and their future. This is our community, and they're taking care of it. Well, and great things happen with that. When we, when we give kids opportunity, uh, CTE generally has a better than 99% graduation rate for our students going through the program, and we feel that one of the reasons that is is they're involved, they're interested to be here, is they're doing things that they see has, has function for their life that can get them where they want to be and what they have interest in. 
Um, in the old days, it was, it, and I know we walked a lot of rooms yesterday. In the old days in classrooms, you'd see students sitting down, everybody was quiet, not yes. a sound in there. You probably didn't see that yesterday. I didn't see that yesterday, and it made me sad because that's the one thing I couldn't do is sit down and shut up. Like right now, even sitting down is hard for me, but I can talk, so I'm good, right? You know, and so th- th- this is why I have a podcast is because I can't shut up. But these kids were interacting. They were building social skills. Yes, and in both both with, with project development or troubleshooting, whatever class it was in, working in teams, uh, all the things that employers want today that students need to have to have those interaction social skills to be successful in the, today's workforce. And you're providing that for them. We try. Oh, and then, <laughs> Very hard. You know, and, and one of the things that... Uh, when we were taking the tour, you stopped and you looked at a gentleman and you said, hey, are you going to graduate? And he kind of like, well, I don't know. And he said, hey, come see me. Come, come, come talk to me. It, I was blown away, man. Like that, that genuine concern by, from this guy. And he, okay, yeah. He, I hope he, the guy goes and talks to you because that, that was like, you know, teachers reaching out to be able to see that. And uh, actually, I, I, I want to say one other thing about COFA. I heard some things later when I left about they take care of the teachers here, and the teachers actually have, like, a better vibe than other schools. So I just got to say that. Well, thank you. Yeah. We, we think we do. We've got a great uh, great teams here. CTE, uh, I think, is the best. I may be prejudiced on that. Yeah. But all of COFA has, has a great feel. We're interested in the, the education community and, and certainly in the students. What you saw yesterday on, on reaching out to students is, is teachers, I won't say adopt students, but we know certain students. And, and if we know a student's in trouble, oh, okay. like, like the young man we talked to yesterday, I know he's struggling. I know there's some background stuff there, uh, but but our goal is to get him through through high school and get him to graduate. And if he needs a little math credit uh, and some help and some tutoring, we can provide that. And we can do it in a lot of different ways. Well, I appreciate you. The community appreciates you. So Mr. C, right? That's what everybody's telling me. Yes. What's this? Does it stand for something? Well, the real name's Mr. Champagne. I'm Norm Champagne. Oh, okay. Much easier to say Mr. C. Mr. C. I've gone well, by that for years. Um, I got about 15 more minutes left here, so I think Miss Honeycutt's up next. It's been my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. That was great. So, and and that was one thing I did witness uh, yesterday, everybody, that he did stop that student and said, "Hey, are you going to graduate?" And he he said, "Come see me," because the student kind of got this look on his face that, you know, I don't I don't know, maybe maybe not, but that was a genuine uh, genuine concern that I saw. So I just wanted to highlight that. So, okay, you are the final victim. <laughs> That's exciting. It is. So maybe you, you probably heard by now you want to be close as you can to the mic, and um, you'll do great. So you s- oversee, and so, okay, let's start with the name, Miss Honeycutt, is that? That's correct, Lori Honeycutt. Lori Honeycutt, okay. Well, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate you. Um, what, what is this like for you? Well, we're just very fortunate to have uh, industry Uh, individuals who are willing to come to our campuses and work with our students and this has been a great highlight for the students not only the those that are culinary students but our photographers that have been trailing the chefs for this week it's been a great experience yeah and and the photographers came in from uh, San Luis High School correct Mm -hmm. yeah and you said they're good they have a long night they have a long night tonight. Yeah. They started early this morning uh, taking pictures as the chefs toured uh, the different agriculture uh, farms and everything. And then they will, um, they've will they been taking pictures of them working in the kitchens. And then they'll um, take pictures of them interacting with the farmers and uh, different uh, industry uh, leaders who are here in the Yuma area for the harvest dinner tonight. So, they're, yeah, they'll be there tonight at the harvest yes, dinner. to will. be. Uh, you know, but that's part of the real world again, it right? Is, that's it what is. you got to do sometimes. So, <laughs> so they're learning those life skills right here. And uh, so we mentioned San Luis. So you oversee the CTE for the district. Correct, for um, our six high schools. For the six high schools. Mm-hmm. Can you just name the six high schools real quick? We have, uh, oh, let's see if I can do it in order here. Yuma High School is our um, original school, and then COFA, and then Cibola High School. And then we have San Luis, Vista, and Gila Ridge High School. Shout out to Vista. That's where I graduated from. Here and Vista. I went to two schools. I would leave here and then go to Vista for the rest of the day. But uh, I did what I had to do to graduate. So Excellent. Um, so are you seeing a lot of success in CTE? We are. There's a lot of focus on CTE right now, um, mainly because um, we are really focused on having students. Um, all of our programs have dual credit, so that means students get uh, Arizona Western College credit as well as industry certification as well as high school credit. 
And so all of those things together uh, is a nice package deal for students. So that, that, like you said, the package deal, because it's kind of like above and beyond, right? Because yeah. like, it's like you're not just working to graduate. This is college credits. It is college credits. This yes. is something for like when you leave here, you're already investing into that part of your life and that phase now. Correct. And uh, some of our programs, six of our programs, you can almost have an end, um, a college certificate before you leave high school. No way. It is. And you can also have that industry certification. So really, you only have to have the English and mathematics and have some a, of the general mm-hmm. stuff to be able Correct. to cover that, the, the generals that you need to take. Um, so what are the some of the um, uh, fields that you guys got here? I think I saw like a cosmetology one is coming. We d- Well, no, it's already here. We oh, have okay. cosmetology as well. We partner with Yuma School of Beauty. And Yuma School of Beauty um, has the students, well, some of the, for the level one students, they're here on campus. But for our level two students, they're actually um, just like a, another student would be who's at Yuma School of Beauty. And so they go to school part time. And then they uh, transfer over, and they're at Yuma School of Beauty doing, um, getting their uh, hairstylist uh, license. Gotcha. So what are some of the other ones that you have here? We have nursing. Um, and that, this isn't just at COFA. This is across our district. We have nursing, so the students are getting a CNA license before they graduate, graduate from high school. Um, then we have automotive, construction. Um, one of our new programs for next year is a drone program. A what? A drone program. Drones? Yes. <laughs> How is that a program? I'm, I'm intrigued. Yes. Uh, it's kind of neat just because the students will take engineering classes, so that way they're getting kind of an engineering background. And our teacher for that is actually retired from uh, Boeing, and he's worked at Yuma Proving Ground for a number of years, and so he'll be training the students how to work with drones for not only agriculture careers, but um, also yeah. uh, BLM. Um, some of our advisory board people are from BLM. Uh, they're from agriculture. They're from um, uh, um, different law enforcement agencies in the area. So you guys so are on the cutting edge of like what, what's going to happen. Correct. Like there's going to be a need for this. So th- when somebody needs to be tapped, it's like, okay, we, we, need, to, we need to get people from the CTE department because... These kids know how to fly a drone or do whatever that needs to be done in this ag uh, industry. Uh, well, we hear from industry workers um, and industry leaders, and they tell us this is the wave of the future. And when they say that that's what's going to happen, you our pay attention. We, we pay attention. We make sure we develop a program that's appropriate for it. And you, you said you. Um, well, just let's go back to like name some more. Uh, fields that you guys cover? Um, well, let's see. Uh, culinary, you've obviously yeah. seen hospitality as well because uh, Arizona is a great place to visit, and so that's um, a key um, area. Uh, we also have quite a few welding programs. Those are very popular with the students, not yeah. only because it's just the welding, but because it uh, leads to careers in manufacturing um, as well as other areas that um, are really of high interest right now uh, for the students as well as for industry. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? We have business, business management, business operations. Uh, We have uh, digital photography and film and TV. Film and TV? Yes. Oh, wow, I I didn't know that. Yes, we have film and TV at two different campuses. What what campuses have those? We have Gila Ridge and San Luis High School. Both have film and TV, and they have a um, full newscast and everything that they do uh, for the campuses. Oh, that, that's great. That, in, you know, that, these are things that are definitely needed. That these kids, like some, somebody doesn't want to like stick with science or math or these things their whole life. They want to go into lead, be a little bit more, you know, somebody wants to be on TV. Like you said, they, now they have this outlet to be able to do it. Like I, I had drama. I took drama because, you know, here I am doing this now. But um, now there's a different outlet to actual TV. So you're giving them something to focus on so they can have that goal. And again, now the industry can tap them right away from this program. And uh, have you seen that yet? We've seen a lot of, uh, of that, of students going straight to industry. However, about 82% of our students go to college first. Um, and then they, um, one of the beauties of having CTE is they can not have student debt. And so mm-hmm. that's a big deal for us um, and for the students and their families. Um, but it also allows them to support themselves if they wanted to. Um, and so they can have a, a, a job 
as well as going to college at the same time, or they can go straight into industry. Um, our industry partners, um, like our Southwest uh, contractors, they're really good about hiring our students right away if that's what they want to do. So it really depends on the individual student. So, and you mentioned partners. So partnering with the community is probably a big part of this as well. Yes, we have uh, advisory boards. From every one of our programs has an advisory board that meets uh, several times a year, and they really drive the instruction in the classroom. So whatever they say is needed, whatever equipment they say is needed, then that's what we uh, try to provide for the students. Yes, and yesterday we were talking, and uh, we talked. Uh, I talked to one one of the uh, students that was doing the photography, and I, I mentioned Luigi, yes. uh, my buddy Luigi and Luigi O Photography, and uh, he's one of the advisors. He is. He is one of uh, uh, from the advisory board and provides a lot of um, benefit to the students. Uh, he's one of our judges for the competitions. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And also uh, when the students have... Um, um, the industry partners that come in, they uh, give them um, feedback and tell them what their portfolio is lacking, what their portfolios need. Um, so all of that. So he's he's one of the great. The kids probably appreci appreciate that because they're getting somebody that's out there. Because that's what Luigi does for a living is just photos. Correct. He's making a life for himself out of doing these photos, and uh, so they probably appreciate getting that from like somebody that actually doing what they want to do, right? Correct. And it allows the students to, well, for industry, it allows them to have a pipeline into their business, which is important for them as well. Uh, so they get to see the best of the best of the kids and they can choose some of them to work in their industry if, they, if they'd mm -hmm. like to. So and partnerships, you also mentioned the Southwest uh, uh, Contractors Association. Mm -hmm. And so th what what benefit do they provide for you right now? They're part of our industry uh, board, uh, their prior advisory board. Um, one of the things that's new on this campus is a student can get their industry credentials with AWC before they graduate. So they were already getting about six um, dual credit classes. Um, and now they, after school, they're taking after school programs so that they can complete their carpentry certificate. Um, and then um, our industry partners have said, we'll hire you right after. Um, so wow. that makes it kind of nice for a student. Yeah, I was uh, actually... Um working for one of the companies for a little while that hired somebody uh, right out of the program for the electrical um, part of it. But um, yeah, so that, that's a great thing. And you guys all seem very passionate about what you do. We are passionate. <laughs> We're uh, passionate about our students and uh, just the great job that they do every day. And it's not just in CTE, but in all of our academics as well. They just, um, many of our CTE students are in AP classes. Uh, we have a huge crossover of that. So we're just preparing them for what's next, whatever that is, industry or um, college or career. So where do you see CTE going? Continuing to evolve as, as the needs come up, just continuing to listen? Like wh where do you see this going? I think um, we're getting better and better at listening to what our community needs, um, and we are getting better and better at training leaders, and that's what we're working on really right now is uh, making sure that um, our students are ones that will lead um, in industry. Um, the next component, I think we'll see a lot of our programs reaching out to the middle schools. Um, we've already started that process, um, so I think that we'll see that as well, and that's an important part um, so that when they come to us at the high school level, they really already know what program that they want to um, get involved in and what they want to emphasize, and there's not any of the trying to figure out what they want in mm -hmm. high school. They'll already know. There, yeah, because um, when I was... When I just got here, there was freshmen touring a lot of the different, like, it's almost like they followed me around as Mr. C was giving me the tour, but uh, there was freshmen coming through, but you're hoping to get them in middle school. We'd like to do that. Yes, that's what our next step uh, That's the next task. Mm -hmm. Get them in middle school, get them familiar with this stuff, so by the time it's time to register for classes in your freshman year, you kind of know, like, oh, I want, I want to... Yeah, Adrian, you know, or Mr. Matthews, I, w I want to be in recording, so I'm going to go there, or I want to be part of culinary, or whatever. Now they already have, like, a, a, a pipeline to mm -hmm. be able to come into that and, and do what they want to do. And then maybe they don't want to do it, but then you guys offer so many different classes and so many different professions here that they can go into, they can change their mind, right? 
Correct. There's never any, um, we don't have any restrictions to students taking more than one program. Um, in fact, we encourage it if uh, they get to choose uh, what programs they're in, and it should be student choice because what they're interested in, you know, might uh, benefit them in many different ways. Uh, one of the photographers and I were talking earlier today as we were driving around, and I said, you know, your photography skills can be used in a lot of different ways, not just as a photographer, but you could be a podcast person or you could be um, uh, someone who's on Instagram and yeah. having your own blog or something like that. But those photography skills, you know, will help you in many different ways. Yeah, that, that's something that they could, you, you, you know, uh, obviously uh, things have changed in the, in the industry as, as time, but they always adapt. There's always something new. So, we, But it's about learning those basics, those fundamentals, those skills to be able to go and move as they adapt, correct? Correct. And that's um, really what we want them to learn, that, that ability to take what they know and what they don't know, discover, um, you know, how... Uh, the ability to figure out what they don't know and, and you know, use those tools to, <laughs> yes. to prepare them for the next step. So. Well, I've been uh, giddy at this whole thing because I, I really, you know, I, I love seeing this being done in my community here. I love Yuma. I love what's going on here. And just to see this and see everybody's enthusiasm and see the kids, like the leaders, um, it's a blessing. So thank you very much. You're, you and your whole, like all the staff is doing a great job. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And we really appreciate your input as an industry uh, partner. And we're just very glad that you're here today. And we've had this opportunity. Yeah. I talked to um, Adrian, uh, Mr. Matthews over there, and said, hey, maybe I could teach people how to do a podcast. That'd be great. Come in and <laughs> <Anytime>. show them. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, I, w I would definitely love that. Great. I would love that. And one thing I want to mention, you said something about Friday and food. Those are my two F words, favorite F words, <laughs> Friday and food. We do. This kitchen, and as well as our other kitchens, um, serve on different um, days of the week, but this one happens to be on Friday. Okay. So that's the day you want to come and, um, and How does that experience work? that. How does that work? Um, the, they have a, a system for you know putting your name in, and um, it gets pretty crowded, so you want to sign up early, and then you can come in. I'll get my producer on that. Rigo, can you can put me on the list? <laughs> Yeah. Put you on the list, and um, of course, it's whatever the students are being taught at that time, so you don't get to pick from a menu, gotcha. but you do have the opportunity to uh, see the growth of the students and the cooks um, during a year's time. You know, oh, we always okay. like to go at the beginning and then, you know, for sure at the end so we can see what the final product well, yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> well, then they mastered it a little bit right, when they got it right. down. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much for doing this uh, interview and helping putting all this on. This is great. Um, we kind of invaded your space here. No, oh, anytime. You can come anytime. We'd oh, love to there, have you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And so th this has been great. And thank you guys for listening for another episode of the Are We Where Yet podcast. And I um, hope everything went well. This was kind of on the fly, but uh, uh, I think it went great. And then, uh, I want to do a podcast with you about education. Would, Would love you? to. Anytime. Okay. That, that'd be great. So hopefully we'll have her back on and we can talk about education. But until then, thank you guys. Goodbye.